much energy in this room. Wake up, people. Wake up. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking around. I know it's been a uh, long night, uh, but it's uh, it's important day in the NBA, important day for franchises. And it was an exciting night. Uh, you know, we acquired rights to to a player uh, that we liked, and uh, we're very excited about it. And now our focus is shifting to free agency. Um, all our group is going to focus on that and how we can improve our team uh, moving forward. So we'll take your questions. Darnell Mayberry, the Athletic Arcturus, are you allowed to talk about the pick right now? Is it official? <clears throat> about the player, yes. About the actual transaction. Uh, wouldn't talk about the details. What, what did you like about Julian Phillips? Well, you know, I, you know, our group liked him. Um, he's, uh, you know, ex McDonald's, you know, all American, uh, freshman, 19 years old, uh, multi positional defender, athletes in, uh, in the draft, 43 inch vertical, and, you know, he can step in. Uh, Right now, you know, probably can defend uh, on our level, but he has a lot of things, obviously, to improve. And but we're looking forward to. He's very young and has he's very talented. I was just curious, AK, about the uh, I guess Cody Westerland from Six Seventy Score, but the thought process of trading up and then taking a guy who, like you just said, has room to improve, that is a freshman coming out of college. Was there a thought process to taking an older player, someone more ready in the rotation, or how do you balance those things? No, we we just target most talented guys and, you know, and, you know, because our group had them much higher. Um, um, you know, we looked at a lot of uh, things in the first round as well. And it just, came out that you know we we had a good transaction in the second round and we got a very good player so we're pretty happy with that casey johnson with nbc sports chicago um arturis this may be more of a symbolic question but with uh, jet howard's uh, selection by the orlando magic tonight that officially closes the books on that mm -hmm. nikola vucevic trade two years and three months down the road how do you assess that trade i think it was uh the beginning where we try to um, build here in Chicago, I think that transaction when we brought Vooch here uh, showed everyone that we're trying to to win. I think uh, once we brought Vooch, you know, uh, we brought in Demar, we brought Alex Caruso, we brought Zoe, and I think you know that started, you know, trying to you know, improve our team and try to be competitive. And, you know, I thought I thought that deal worked out pretty well for us. Yes, yeah, AK. Uh, so uh, when it came to that draft pick, how much did the Derrick Jones Jr. Um, announcement impact you drafting another athletic forward with similar traits? Mark, would you like to? That. <laughs> he said AK. Okay. Um, I mean, it played a bit of a factor, no doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, DJ for everything he brought to the court, the athleticism, the length, um, his ability to get out and defend multiple positions. Um, you know, Julian fits a lot of the, that, those same attributes. And, you know, as we sat up there and went through it and figured out who was available and who wasn't, um, it played a little bit of a part. Um, you know, again, they're both very similar in terms of the way they play and style of play. And, you know, we're excited about bringing him into the fold. Yeah, Mark, another one for you. Um, this is two straight years you all have drafted players who need work shooting. Mm -hmm. What is the plan? How do you explain to your fan base that you need shooting, but you're drafting <clears throat> players who aren't great shooters? You know, when we both uh, showed up here a few years ago, we talked a lot about player development and internal growth. Um, you know, we recently hired a new Player, uh, director of player development to focus just on that shooting 
and, you know, being shot ready and being uh, ready to shoot the ball when you're open. So it's something that's very important to us. Um, we'll continue to work on it every single day. And again, we've addressed it in terms of our coaching staff and hiring somebody recently. Um, Artur, as you mentioned earlier that you guys were potentially targeting some first round picks, how urgent did that kind of feel tonight of wanting to push up into the first round or are you satisfied with landing where you did? No, it's it's not urgent. You're just looking for value in the draft or the way we put it. But, you know, we, we've had some some looks in, in the first, but we thought that uh, the best value we can get is at the position that we acquired, you know, Julian and it worked out very well, I think. Drew Stevens with the bigs, um, AK and Mark. Given Julian Phillips' reputation as not being much of a shooter right now at this period of time, how much more of a premium will you guys put on shooting going into free agency? Well, I, I think, you know, after the season, uh, I think I'm, <laughs> I mentioned that we trying to change our shooting profile. Uh, being, you know, last in the league in, in rate from a three and, and three-point makes. So I think we're going to try to address that in offseason. Paul, your uh, ESPN. Um, it's been a few months since Lonzo has had his surgery. What's new? What's the latest on him? Is he able to do anything? And kind of where is he at at this point? Well, he's, you know, he's recovering nicely. Uh, I think uh, last month he got off the crutches and, you know, he's recovering, um, doing his rehab. You know, everything is going well. Um, going into off season, I think our expectation is that he's not coming back next season and he's going to continue on his recovery. Um, if he comes back, it would be great but we're just going to treat this off season and getting ready for the season that he's, he's not going to be back next season. Just, I mean, that'd be two years potentially of him not playing. Do you have confidence that he's going to be able to play for you guys at any point in the future? No, I hope eventually he's, you're going to see him on the basketball court, but I do not think he's going to be back next season. For, the, for either one of you, um, what is going to be kind of the process with uh, Nikola Vucevic as you enter free agency? You obviously have the ob ability to extend him before then. You express confidence or at least the desire to resign him when we talk to you in mid-April. So where does that stand? What's going to be kind of the plan with, with Vuce? I think work in progress. I think uh, we kind of taking what step, step at a time, you know, draft right now. And we're going to, you know, continue talking to, to Vooch and representation. And, you know, we have uh, a ton of uh, free agents, uh, a couple of them restricted, uh, unrestricted. So we're going to short term, you know, we're going to figure it out. Uh, Mark Herman, WGN. Just overall, the, at the top of the draft, Victor Wembanyama. Like no one's ever seen a player like that enter the league. Did you ever think you'd see a guy who that long who plays like he does? And what do you think his impact will be? He's pretty incredible. Um, you know, for me, he's probably one of the best eighteen-year-olds I've ever seen in my life. Um, you know, if he stays healthy, if he stays committed to the game, he's got a chance to be a generational type talent. Um, you know, he's got a lot of beyond the length and the skill, his ability to shoot the ball, protect the rim. He's uh, he's got a chance to be elite. Um, following up on the Lonzo line of thinking, uh, how does that impact the way that you approach the point guard position in this offseason and kind of what's been the, the front office approach to that? Well, I think, again, we're going to look at this free agency. We we have a lot of free agents um, and we're going to address shooting, address the lead position. And uh, um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, this is the time to, to talk about it. And we have group next week. We're going to, you know, we're going to address it. And once the free agency starts, I'm sure 
there's information is going to come out and we'll see what we have. But there's a lot of work to do. Um, you know, we have to get better and we're going to address that. AK, it sounds like from everything we heard from you that you guys are still can, you know, you, you want to try to build the roster. You're not looking at a rebuild. But given the situation with Lonzo Ball, I know you guys are still holding out hope. Is there any chance of you guys maybe waving and stretching? Is that on the table at all? No, no, it's not. Not at this time. No. I have a question. Um, Zach Levine once again landed in trade rumors, some of which were maybe accurate and some of which maybe were fabricated. Uh, just, I know you're not going to address specific conversations, but um, just kind of overall, where where is Zach standing within this organization? I think, I think you know, as as always, we're not going to comment on rumors, but I think we all were disappointed the way uh, the season ended. And Zach, I think, was one of the guys that was very disappointed the way it ended in Miami. And uh, he went into off season to to get better, and he's already working out with uh, our, you know, with uh, Ty Abbott, our player development, uh, you know, in LA. So he started his work, started early. Uh, so he's um, he's trying to get better. So I think. Uh, I think a lot of our guys right now already in off season, you know, working working hard and trying to get better and get ready for the season. So um Derek Jones during the season kind of indicated that he might or would opt in. Um were you surprised uh, you know based on his decision and like I mean Mark I, said, I don't participate in the decision so it's it's up to uh, up to players so <laughs> Um, you know, well, he's he, he, you're talking about Derek Jones, right? Derek Jones. Yeah. So I, I think he's a free agent right now. And, you know, when the time comes, we're going to be talking to him as well. So, I mean, I, I think. Uh, How about know, possibly bringing him back? Yes. There's a, always possibility too. So. Do, do you know about the circumstances with Andre Drummond yet? Because we know. still don't know. We still okay. don't know. So he's, he's going to make a decision. And one other, there's obviously always a lot of rumors, speculation goes on before the draft, free agency and all. What would your, your attitude or response or how would you characterize all the stuff that was talked about regarding the Bulls that you, you might have read about leading up to? I that? do not follow that. I don't, do not read that. I think I'm focused on, you know, what our group thinks and how we can improve this team. And I think... As we said that before, I think we have a lot of work to do. And, you know, you obviously uh, writing about how much work we need to do and <laughs> uh, people telling me that, you know, we need to get to it. So we will this week and we're going to address our stuff in free agency. I mean, you mentioned the shooting coach. I assume you're talking about Peter Patton. Is yep. that correct? Can you talk a little bit more about what, uh, why you guys brought him in? Any prior relationship you guys had, and what's he's, what's the plan to to utilize him over the summer? So I think you know, AK talked a lot about it um, at the end of the season when he sat before you guys, and he talked about our shooting profile, and you know, the need to increase not only three point looks, but you know, just shooting in general. And, you know, as a team, our shooting needs to improve. And we sat as a group and talked about what are the things that we need to do. And one of them we thought about was we needed to hire a shooting coach. Um, Peter comes to us not only as a shooting coach, but somebody can actually oversee our player development function. Um, we thought we needed a fresh look. We thought we needed to look at a different approach. And he brings a wealth of experience to that position. So. We're excited about having him here in our building, working with our coaching staff, working with our players. And we feel like he can help um, the overall look and feel of how we um, play the game and shoot the ball. I, I kind of asked this question in mid-April. I'm going to try to ask it again. Um, you've talked about all the work you have to do in free agency, and obviously you guys have goals and targets in mind right now as to what you want to accomplish in free agency, but you've also expressed a desire to resign 
Nikola Vucevic, Kobe White, Ayo Dosumu. I'm not great at math, but my math takes you guys really close to the luxury tax line if you resign those three guys. So how are you going to also use the mid-level exception and address needs in free agency if you want to retain your own free agents? Or maybe you don't. Very long question, as always, <laughs> KC. Uh, I think it all depends, you know, on free agency, how that goes. And, you know, uh, like, a, you know, uh, Jerry and Michael have been always open uh, with me to go into luxury tax if 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 our team is competitive, um, um, you know, top four, top six in the East, it, you know, if, if there are players in free agency that we can, you know, <laughs> there we go. Uh, that can improve our team, and we're you know we're competitive. Uh, you know, we'll we'll retain. You know, we'll retain our free agent. Yes. Um, a couple of quick housekeeping items. Will you extend qualifying offers to Io and Kobe? Can we even talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, yes. It's, okay. Um, yes. I mean, uh, like, like I said, you know, we we talked about at the end of the season about Kobe and Io. I think they they developing, you know, uh, young players. So we're gonna we're gonna address that in free agencies. So. And then a quick one follow up on Lonzo. You said you're operating under the assumption he won't return. Will you apply for the disabled player exception that I think is about half his salary? Will Again, we'll meet up as a group and we'll decide what we're going to do. So, yeah, our, our tourist uh, for fans who might look at the situation and be disappointed that you didn't that you stood pat at the deadline and that you didn't make a big trade, you know, leading into the you know involving draft night. What's your message to that segment of the fan base? Well, I think we made a move in the draft. Uh, I know it's a disappointment. It's not in first round, but uh, we did. Uh, but they will have to wait until I think until the free agency and to see what we look like uh, after that. Yep. <laughs>